All right, let's go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you back to Unit 15. This is Acid Base Equilibrium and Buffers. Uh, folks, I want to do a couple of calculations with you that involve pH and pOH. We looked at this in, 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 a, in a little detail last time, but I want to take a closer look and make sure we can do these types of, of calculations. I'll do two with you, and then you can practice the rest on your own. So here we go. Number two says, calculate the pH or the pOH in the following aqueous solutions. We're going to indicate the solutions as acidic or basic. So here we go. They're told, we're told that the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Now the most straightforward way to arrive at the pH then is going to be to use this formula. pH is equal to minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration and just plug in. So pH is equal to minus the log of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, when I do that on my calculator, I get 2.8539. I want to talk briefly about significant digits involving pH because of the fact that they're a little bit different than what you're used to. As it turns out, when you write a pH, only the no, only the decimals, the ones to the right of the, the numbers to the right of the decimal place, count as significant digits. So, if I have a hydrogen concentrate, a hydrogen ion concentration of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, that means I've got two significant digits because this part doesn't matter. I've got two significant digits. How do I express two significant digits in the pH? Well, here's what I do. I count, again, only the numbers to the right of the decimal. This 3 does not kick this 5 up. So if I write 2.85, because the 3 does not kick the, the uh, 5 up, that's only two significant digits, not 3. It looks like it's 3, but the 2 doesn't count. That's the rule for significant digits with regard to pH. Okay. So if you've got two significant digits in the hydrogen ion concentration and you want to express two significant digits in the pH, you're only going to get, go two numbers to the right of the decimal. So our answer would be 2.85. Now what would be the most direct way then of getting the pOH? Because we're being asked for both pH and pOH. Well, Remember that the relationship between pH and pOH is they, they are complementary. So pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So likewise, 14 minus the pH, which is 2.85, or 11.15 is going to be the pOH, right? The pOH. Now, would this be acidic or basic? Well, look to the hydrogen ion, or look to the pH. If it's less than 7, it's acidic, and it is less than 7, so this is going to be acidic right this is going to be an acidic solution all right let's move on the next one says that we've got an OH minus concentration of 2.08 times 10 to the minus 7 molar all right so if that's the hydro hydroxide ion concentration what's the pOH now don't make the mistake of saying pOH or pH rather is equal to minus the log of the 2.08 times 10 to the minus 7 the pOH is what is equal to minus the log of the 2.08 times 10 to the minus 7, right? So here we go. When we get do that on the calculator, we get, uh, and my, by the way, it's not hard to put it into the calculator. Just hit negative. That's the negative on the very bottom. LOG. Make sure you use the LOG button and not the LN button. That will open the parentheses up for you. Close the parentheses and hit the enter button, and you'll get 6.682. Again, let's talk about significant digits. In the number 2.08, this part doesn't count. The, the 10 to the minus 7 doesn't matter. There are three significant digits. That means I need three significant digits in my pH. The numbers to the right of the decimal are the only ones that matter. So my answer would be 6.682. Now, if I want to know the pH, because that was the pOH, if I want to know the pH, what I'm going to do is simply subtract that number, 6.682, from 14. And when I do that, I get 7.318. So would that be acidic or basic? Well, look to the pH. If the pH is above 7, it's basic. And it is slightly above 7. 7.318 is a little bit bigger than 7. So it's going to be basic. Okay, Folks, I'm going to let you practice the next, what, three or four here. And that'll get you ready for the next level. But you've got to do some of these on your own. So uh, make sure you do that. All right.
On exercise number three, we want to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration in each of the following aqueous solutions. So they're giving me the pH in this first one. In fact, we'll just do the first one. I'll do the first one with you, and then I'll let you practice on your own for the rest of them. So we've got 7.41. This time we're going to go the opposite direction. We're being given the pH, and we want to know the hydrogen ion concentration first. So we're going to say pH is equal to minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. If it's 7.41, we're going to say 7.41 then is equal to minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So let me solve for hydrogen ion concentration now by pulling the negative sign to the left-hand side. So we get negative 7.41 is equal to the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, here comes the tricky part. Okay, This step is what... I think your math teacher is called exponentiation, okay? I think that's what they call it. Um, so here's how you do it. You raise everything to the power of 10. Raise everything to, on left and right side to the power of 10. So we have 10 to the negative 7.41 is equal to 10 to the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now here's the, the, the trick. 10 to the log of something is equal to that thing. So 10 to the log of the hydrogen ion concentration is the hydrogen ion concentration, and that's what we were looking for. So when we plug in, again, make sure you know the key steps on your calculator. You're going to say on your calculator, get yours in front of you right now and do it right now. You're going to say, let me turn it on first. You're going to say second LOG. That's 10 to the carat and then negative 7.41, 7.41. Close the parentheses, and I get this number. 3.9 times 10 to the negative eighth is my hydrogen ion concentration. Okay? So now I've got the hydrogen ion concentration. What's the most direct way of arriving at the hydroxide ion concentration? Well, I can use the relationship of Kw. Right? Remember that Kw is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide concentration, and the number is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So if I want to know the hydroxide ion concentration, I'm going to say that's equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 3.9 times 10 to the minus 8. When I do that, I've, I get uh, 2.6 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter. That's concentration, so it's moles per liter. Okay? So that'll, be, that'll do it for A. I want you to practice B, C, D, and that's it, and E. And F. And that's it. Okay? All right, folks. I want to move on now to Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. And remember that Bronsted, a Bronsted Lowry acid was a proton donor. And a Bronsted Lowry base was a proton acceptor. So let's take a look at this situation. We've got hydrochloric acid in water produces Cl minus and H3O plus. So what's happening here is that 8Cl is going to donate or give a proton to H3O. How do you know that? Well, look at the right-hand side. HCl becomes Cl minus. It gave up a proton, did it not? Yeah, it sure did. That makes hydrochloric acid the Bronsted-Lowry acid. The water, likewise, it gained an elect uh, proton. I'm sorry, it gained a proton. How do I know? Well, look at the right-hand side. It's H3O plus over here, right? So H2O gained a proton. So it is a base. It's a Bronsted-Lowry base. Now what I want to do is I want to look at it from the point of view of going right to left. Because this is, after all, an equilibrium, right? It's going back and forth. Now, remember that a, an acid is a donor of protons, a conjugate a, a donor of protons. Now, on the right-hand side, we call it conjugate acid and conjugate base. So notice that in this case, the H3O plus, I'll put the arrow on the bottom this time, is giving a proton or donating a proton to the Cl minus. How do you know? Because right to left, it's going from H3O plus to H2O. That makes this the acid. But because it's on the right-hand side, we're going to call it a conjugate acid. And this the base. But because we call it, it's on the right-hand side, we're going to call it a conjugate base. Okay? All right, let's take a look now at the following acids, and we want to write the formula for the conjugate base, okay? We want to write the formula for the base that's formed. All right, we've got H2PO4 minus. What's the base? Well, what do, what do, do uh, 
acids do? They give away protons, right? They, they are proton donors. So H2PO4, when you give up a proton, becomes HPO4 minus 2. You could write 2 minus if you wanted to, but HPO4 minus 2 would be just fine. Let's look at B, HClO2. The hydrogen is acidic. It's going to leave, if this is an acid, this is the conjugate base for that acid. It's the species that doesn't have the hydrogen. So it's HClO2 minus. We lost a charge, so it's negative 1. H2O, this is easy. We just simply get rid of, if this is the acid, the conjugate base is going to be one less hydrogen, so we get OH minus. CH3, NH3 plus, okay? We have CH3, NH2. We give away one of the protons. The charge goes down because we give away one of the protons, so CH3, NH2. OH minus, folks, this is a trick. OH minus is never going to give up a hydrogen there's no way so it's not really doable okay so don't worry about that one F NH4 plus is the ammonium ion if it gives away a proton it becomes NH3 and we're done with exercise 4 all right let's look now at exercise 5 it says for each of the following compounds write the reaction with water and indicate the Bronsted acid base and the conjugate acid and the conjugate base I won't do the first one because I've already done that and it is an example. Uh, so you'll just look back and see what I did there and uh, you'll, you'll be able to do that one. Let's look at B though. We have NH3. So when you put NH3 or ammonia in water, you're going to have an equilibrium. It's a weak base, right? So we're going to have NH4 plus and OH minus. So we're going to call the base on the left-hand side the ammonia and the conjugate acid is the H2O. Notice that this is producing OH minus, that's what makes ammonia a base, right? So, why is water the acid? It's the acid because it's a proton donor. It's giving a proton to the ammonia. Now, on the other side, we have NH4. It's giving a proton to hydroxide, right? Because hydroxide on the other side, if you go right to left, is becoming H2O. So, that makes that the conjugate base, all right? So that would be the equilibrium expression for the NH3 in water. For HCN in water, we're going to have something similar in that HCN is a weak acid, so it's an equilibrium, right? And it's an acid because it gives away a proton. It gives away the only proton it's got to water, just like that. So that makes this the Bronsted-Lowry acid, but water is the Bronsted-Lowry base. Let's go the other way. The acid is the one that gives away the proton. It's a proton donor. H3O does that to become H2O going right to left. So that makes that the conjugate acid and this the conjugate base. Okay? All right, we're going to skip D. I want to go down to E because this is an important one right here. And what we've got is we've got CH3, CH2, NH2. Okay? This is called ethylamine. Now, when you have a situation where you have like a uh, uh, ethyl group or a methyl group to uh, added to an NH2 group, right? This is what's going to happen. You've got, for example, you've got nitrogen here, you've got hydrogen here and here, you've got the ethyl group here, then you've got an open space here that you could add something onto, right? And that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to take a hydrogen from the from the Bronsted-Lowry acid and you're going to add it right there onto that nitrogen to produce CH3, CH2, NH3 plus. That's where that hydrogen goes. It doesn't go here or there on this carbon or this carbon. It goes right onto that last nitrogen, right? So we're going to say NH3 plus plus OH minus. Likewise, going right to left, what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way. We're going to take a proton from the acid and add it onto the base, just like that, okay? Folks, I think that's a good place uh, for us to, to stop and uh, kind of regroup, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.